welcome. Today I'm going to share how I made these tall, narrow junk journals out of some, uh, gro the covers out of some grocery, brown grocery bag papers. I'll get my words out. <laughs> I did this a little while ago, but um, I just took a long time to edit this video. Uh, I did it over um, the span of a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, just here and there. So it took me a while to get these finished and then get my act together to edit the video and all that. But anyway, a while ago, I used some grocery bags and I put paint on them. As you can see there, one is green, one is pink. I also used orange paint on some and white uh, gesso on some. And then I stamped on top of the paint with um, some large stamps called fo Art Foamies. And um, they are large foam stamps, as the name implies. And they make really cool big um, uh, patterns, as you can see there. And you can use them with paint, which I really like too. So um, if you're interested, I'll leave a link below to the Art Foamies website. So moving along, that's how I, that's how I made those covers and then those papers sat for a very long time and I decided to make these journals and the way I decided to make them the size that they are the covers and the journals is that I took an, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded it in half lengthwise and that's the size of my journal so on the inside because the grocery bag paper is pretty sturdy um, I thought I would add some paper to the inside as you can see there I some book pages in the past I've also added fabric which I've just attached with glue and then sewn around the edges but this time I decided to do the book pages and I just gathered uh, several different types of pages and I tried to get varieties of beige and types uh, you know the type of the of the words and um, you know, even some modern book pages, some vintage book pages, and then I just tore them. I tried not to think too hard about it, tore them into pieces. Some are sideways, some are upside down, and so on and so on. So I did that to all the inside covers. Then I took some brown and black paint, um, and I'm going, going to just, uh, like distress and age the inside of it with the brown and the black. And I'm, I'm using a different journal cover there as you can see because I started working on these and I didn't start recording so I um, kind of had to backtrack and show you how I did this this one little journal that's a totally different size from all the others just because it was a little leftover piece that I had but the process is the same so I took my brown paint I watered it down a little bit and put it on the um, the book page book pages and then I am wiping it with a wipe. Um, then I think I decided, I can't remember now. <laughs> it's been so long since I did this. I just put that brown paint all over with the wipe. That's what I did. And then I'm going to edge with the um, black, I believe is what I'm going to do next with my sponge and a little bit of black paint. I'm going to edge around the cover on the inside and the outside because I like to have that dark edge. So I guess I did the outs inside with brown paint and I know I'm going to do the outside with black but I feel like I did both sides with black too. So we'll see. We'll both we'll all see together. <laughs> so I'm edging again with brown, black paint. Um, this that step is totally optional. Okay here comes the black paint. I was pretty sure I did that. So I edge, again, I edge the inside cover and the outside cover with a little bit of black paint. Oh, and I forgot, obviously you can see there that I also sewed um, around the edge with a zigzag stitch just to give it a little decorative touch and also um, just make sure everything sticks together, I guess. And I did that before I added the paint because, you know, just not to gum up my sewing machine because I often get impatient and try to start sewing before the paints even dry so I decided not to 
not to get into any trouble with that. So I'm edging, still edging and edging and edging. This will end soon, I promise. The next thing I'm going to do is um, figure out what I'm doing with the cover. A while before I made these covers, I made these um, wonky faces with a Stabilo All pencil in black, and I just put gesso on some book pages and I drew deliberately wonky faces, and then I activated them with water, the, the Stabilo pencil with water, which makes them look the way they do. And so I decided to use these um, wonky faces on my journal covers. And so I'm attaching some, um, uh, what do you call it, cheesecloth to the faces. And then I'm going to sew around them. And you can see there I'm back and I have sewn around them with some wonky stitching. <laughs> and then I wanted to add a black, some type of a dark black border or not border, but part um, color on the spine. So I had that fabric that I thought looked nice on the covers. And I'm going to, I tore some strips to add to there. And then I have these orange covers that I'm also making. And I decided to use the off-white because I didn't, th I thought the black didn't work with that orange cover. But the other ones are going to be the same. And what you, when you'll see next is I'm showing you how I put the whole thing together and I'm just showing you how I do one. Again, I did several, but they're all the same process. So this is the pink one. I attached everything to the cover, the face and the spine piece. And then I'm showing you the papers that I picked out to put inside. I just picked a variety of papers that I already had because I'm constantly um, dyeing papers and doing gel prints, which is, that was a gel print there just a minute ago. I did some sewing on the inside just to add a little bit of interest because I wasn't planning on decorating these um, very much, if at all, and so I just wanted to add a little bit of something in there. So I thought the sewing would be a nice touch and let, leaving the strings, um, you know, hanging out on the top and the bottom, which I also like. <laughs> And so I'm arranging all my papers. Those are time cards and um, a flash card, a vintage flash card um, that I thought would be cool to add there. And just a variety of miscellaneous papers. That's more of that paper bag. Um, you know, for a while I was <laughs> collecting a lot of gro grocery bags, so I was using them a lot. So I arranged all my papers the way I want them. And then I'm going to sew in that signature with a five hole pamphlet stitch and I decided to show this process because I don't use the five hole pamphlet stitch very often and I've never recorded myself doing it so I thought that would be something different to show to share so um, with the pam five hole pamphlet stitch it's really easy and um, I really like it because I don't even really have to measure you just I just eyeball the center, make a hole, then do the top hole, the bottom hole, which is about an inch or so from the top and the bottom. And then you make a hole in between the center and the top and the center and the bottom. And there you have the five holes. And especially with a um, one signature journal, you don't, I don't think you have to measure, but you, of course, if you want it to be very um, accurate you can definitely measure it so um, just making sure all the holes you know are are um, the you know the the all went through the holes properly so I don't have any trouble stitching and then I um, did four lengths of my waxed thread because I wanted to leave extra I always do extra anyway so I don't want to run short but I also wanted to leave um, a tail um, t in the middle to um, attach some beads and things and you'll see that later. So I had <laughs> a little trouble threading my needle because I'm recording of course. So you go through the inside to, through the center hole and then you um, and I still sometimes with fabric I have trouble finding that hole through the fabric and sometimes it starts to close up very quickly too. So, but any, of course, when you're recording, anything that can go wrong will be wrong, but I'll get it. And so you go um, in 
through the um, hole right above the center and you can do it above or you can do it below. It doesn't matter which order you go in, just if you can either you know go up or down if that makes sense. Then you go in the next hole to the outside and then you go back down through that second hole. Um, as you can see there, I'm still fighting with it a little bit. <laughs> I use the um, those um, clippers there, whatever you pliers, to pull the needle out when I have trouble. As I joke, I have old lady hands. Anyway, you go, you skip the middle hole when you go back through and go to the hole just underneath the center, then go down to the bottom hole and then back through, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting tangled up with all my long strings, and then um, go through that second to last hole, and then back down through the center. I hope that all makes sense. It's really quite simple, and if you, I think if you just watch it, disregard all my fumbling, <laughs> and watch it again if you have any if you if it doesn't make sense, I think you'll get it. Or just, you know, look up, look up other tutorials on YouTube that explain it better than I do. So again, I'm having trouble um, because I'm getting caught up in my thread there. So <laughs> this happens to me every time I try to record something. If something's going to go wrong, it will go wrong when I'm recording. Usually I don't have any issues. So I'm just going to tie off the string there, the thread. And I put one thread on one side, one on the other, double knot it. And then I have that long piece, as I said. I have quite a lot, like way too much, but I wanted it dangling like that so I could attach some beads and buttons, which I'm going to do next. And I will show you that process. Um, I have some black beads, as you can see there. If you're going to do this, you just want to make sure that your thread the hole in the beads is big enough for your thread to go through because I've had that happen to me where I buy beads and then the thread's too thick to go through it. So you just have to be careful. Um, there's not really much to explain here. I'm just choosing some beads that I think look good together and attaching them to each of the strings. I usually like to do beads and button. I'm going to do use some buttons too and I like to do those in threes. Threes or fives but if I do five it's usually I don't do that very often. It usually has to be something really really small to put five beads on the string at least for a journal for me. So again I'm fumbling <laughs> with this. Sometimes that's it is hard to get the thread through the beads, which is why I was saying make sure you get beads with the holes big enough for the thread to go through. And so that's, you know, that's all I do. And then I make a double knot at the end so the beads don't slide off. And that's the way I do it. I don't know if that's exactly the right way, but it seems to work for me. So um, I'm going to do the same thing with the other thread that's hanging there, except I'm putting a button to and there I'm finished with that process. So I have my two, my dangly beads. And then um, I'm just flipping through again, showing you all my pages in the center there. So the last thing I did was add a closure. I added two eyelets and a black shoelace, <laughs> which I um, decided to use as my closure and I thought it just uh, worked well with this type of journal. They're uh, super casual and grungy and uh, you know just something a little different and that's how I put it together. I'm showing you the eyelets that I put in. I didn't record that for some reason. As I said this took you know place over a certain period of time so um, I did it for the one to show uh, for the video I guess and then I didn't do the rest quite yet but there are some of the other um, journals that I put together I haven't sewn them all in yet the signatures but I'm gonna do the same process for all I'm showing you the orange covers which I did a little bit differently with a metal piece some sewing burlap and grungy paper so there you have it folks I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and see you next time